Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. We continue to celebrate the Easter season, and today we celebrate St. Augustine of Canterbury, who was a great uh, missionary, a priest who went to England and uh, converted um, many in that uh, country. And in the readings today, we also hear about the priesthood and how um, the Lord Jesus, at the Last Supper, he prayed for his priests whom he had separated from the world and uh, consecrated. Let us begin this Mass by asking forgiveness for the times we have not been faithful in our ministries and our vocations. Let us ask God's mercy so that we can worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came <clears throat> to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You intercede for us constantly at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the preaching of the Bishop St. Augustine of Canterbury led the English peoples to the gospel, grant, we pray, that the fruits of his labors may remain ever abundant in your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come after you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, perverting the truth to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend to you to God. And now I commend to you, commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You know well that these very hands <clears throat> have served my needs and my companions. In every way I have shown you that by hard work of that sort, we must help the weak. And keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him, for they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Show forth, O God, your power, the power, O God, with which you took our part. For your temple in Jerusalem, let the kings bring you gifts. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. You kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Chant praise to the Lord who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold, his voice resounds, the voice of power, Confess the power of God. Sing to God, O kingdom of the earth. O over Israel in his, is his majesty. His power is in the skies. 
awesome in his sanctuary as God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And it's the gospel reading of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost, except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. My sisters and brothers, this is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue our journey through the Easter season, we're now four days away from Pentecost, we've been following the journeys of Paul, his missionary journeys. And in this particular reading this morning from the 20th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, I encourage us to think about the community to which Paul is speaking these words. This is the New Testament church. Their faith is alive. They've had life-changing encounters in baptism. It was a genuinely life-transforming experience since the vast majority of them were baptized as adults. They know what it is to be called from darkness into light, to be a new creation. Pentecost is alive. The spirit is alive. And all of a sudden, Paul gives them this warning. Warning, warning, warning. The day is going to come. From your own group, men will come forward perverting the truth to draw the disciples away after them. It's a warning of the dangers of the destruction of unity. Unity was a sign to St. Paul of the authentic experience of God, of the Spirit. That's why Paul pointed out <laughs> there's one faith, there's one church, there's one Spirit, there's one Lord, and yet the day will come when there will be attempts to disrupt that unity. And the scary thing is, they will come from within the body, within the church. In the gospel, Jesus prayed for unity, that they may be one, Father, as you and I are one. Yes, he was praying for the priests, but he was also praying for the church. 
And here we are, 2,000 years later, and when we look at the church, let's say the generic church, the Christian world, what do we see? We see the attack against the unity of the church. In 1054, the church was split by people from within the body who just couldn't get their heads together, their hearts together, quarreling over differences of understanding. And the most bizarre aspect of that split that created the Greek Orthodox Church. And from the Greek Orthodox Church came the Russian Orthodox Church. They couldn't even agree over a single word. Said the Roman side of the church, the Holy Spirit descends from the Father and the Son. The Latin term is filioque, and the Son. Said the Greek side of the church, no, 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 no. The Spirit descends from the Father through Jesus. And because they could not come together, the Greek side of the church split from the Roman side. That's the first breaking of the unity. And 500 years later, the church was again fractured with the Protestant Reformation. Erasmus, who was a contemporary of Luther, warned him. Erasmus said the same things that Luther said about the corruption in the church, but he never broke with the church. Brother Martin, so many words, you don't know what you're doing. Because if you destroy the unity of the church, as it existed in the 16th century, you take away the teaching authority of the church. You're taking away the only thing that is holding Christendom together. And what's going to result is going to be confusion, a fracturing of the unity. And we know what happened. History of Protestantism, I used to tell my students this, and I knew I was standing on thin ground when I said this, because most of them were not Catholic, most of them from various Protestant denominations, but historically, whether they like it or not, the history of Protestantism is the history of division and confusion. That's why there are over 2,000 Protestant denominations today. But we look at that, in 2021, and we shrug our shoulders, say, yeah, okay, Christendom is divided, so what? It's the way it is. We take it for granted. This is the opposite of what Jesus prayed for. And the reason this is important for us, I, I, I picked this up somewhere along the line. It makes sense to me. A statement somebody made somewhere, I don't remember where, I don't remember who it was. The sign of an authentic disciple is the heart of that person is grieved by what grieves the heart of Jesus. Think about that. The heart of the disciple is grieved by what grieves the heart of Jesus. What does Jesus see when he looks at the church today? 2,000 plus denominations and Protestantism, each one saying they're the only correct one. The Greeks, Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, other Orthodox communities, all saying the Roman church is wrong, fighting among themselves, quarreling among themselves. That's why the church prays for unity. We even have a day set aside for Christian unity. That's why we have the ecumenical movement coming out of the Second Vatican Council, praying for unity. That's why the church encourages us to work together as Christians. And yet Paul's warning is still alive today. A classic example. Several years ago, I attended an ecumenical conference in Indianapolis, Indiana, and it was an interesting experience for me. It was the first time I had ever been part of anything like this. 
there was a Catholic tract, and the Catholics were the largest group of this ecumenical gathering. And then there were various denominational tracts. And we had the, the denominational tracts in the morning, and then in the evening, in the afternoon. And in the evening, we all came together and we had a marvelous prayer meeting, thousands of people focusing on our commonality in Jesus, not worrying about the division, theological divisions between us. It was wonderful. But I could pick up, as I listened to some of the Protestant teaching, I could pick up a word here, a theme there, that illustrated the division of the church in our day. And when this conference was over, as we were leaving, there was a whole bunch of people outside waiting for us to leave. And as we came out of the convention center, they're handing out little tracts. And I took one of them and I opened it up. And it was a denunciation of the Catholic Church with a warning. If we didn't join their church, we were all going to hell. Classic example of the division that has ruptured the church and exists to this day. So three days, four days away from Pentecost, I encourage all of us maybe to join our hearts together with all of those all over the world who are praying for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost in four days. Join our prayer with theirs and pray for that. Pray for unity in the church. The Spirit is about unity. There's supposed to be one body, one church, one faith, one Lord. Pray together for unity. I think that's what would bring joy to God. And all of God's people, once again, were one. God bless you. Let us pray as we await our bishop's uh, word and guidance as regards the pandemic. We pray for our bishop and for our pope and for all of those leaders of our church that they will truly be a sign uh, and a source of unity for all Christian people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who so division for all those who pervert the truth even within the church the voices that um, uh, separate and divide that they will be uh, converted and that there will be one fold and one shepherd we pray to the lord lord, lord hear our prayer we pray for all of those who suffer most because of the pandemic and the effects of the quarantine we pray that they will be uh, healing and comfort and the holy spirit the comforter will um, be a um, consolation to all of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in this Mass for the intentions of the Williams family and for all those who have died, also that they will rest in peace and enter the joy of heaven with St. Augustine of Canterbury and all the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers offered now at the altar of Jesus our Lord, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Amen. 
Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, on the feast day of Blessed Augustine of Canterbury, and grant that we, who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion, may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his ascension, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Hmm. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. In the hope of the resurrection, all those who died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be good heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, please take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, please take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, please take away the sins of the world. Grant mercy to us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be shown by my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord. Hallelujah.
let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which blessed Augustine of Canterbury never ceased to labor and for which he spent his whole life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Little by little we are looking at ways to open the church and uh, Today, uh, as is Wednesday, we are going to be opening the church at 9 o'clock for personal prayer from 9 to 10. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we will have the church open, and uh, we'll have a system so that we can um, make sure that we're sanitizing the areas. Uh, most people will prefer, perhaps, to stand uh, here in the sanctuary to say hello to our Lord and to adore Him in the Eucharist. So... Uh, that is today for, at 9 o'clock. And also, uh, we, again, we are awaiting the bishop's uh, word on when we can uh, begin, once again, public masses. So be, please uh, um, consult the uh, um, parish website and the Facebook page so that we can find out when we will be able to resume uh, Sunday masses. We will pray together uh, our novena to the Holy Spirit after the concluding song. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration is ended, so let us go forth as best we can to continue serving the Lord, one another, and all of those to whom he sends us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, sing to Jesus, is the scepter, is the throne. Hallelujah, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of Novena prayer to the Holy Spirit, praying for the parishioners of Presentation Parish, that they will all return to the sacraments when the pandemic is over. Holy Spirit, O oh my God, I adore you and acknowledge here in your presence that I am nothing and can do nothing without you. Come, great paraclete, O oh Father of the poor, O Comforter, fulfill the promise of our blessed Savior, who would not leave us orphans, and come into the mind and heart of your poor, unworthy creature, as you descended on the sacred day of Pentecost, on the Holy Mother of Jesus, and on his first disciples. Grant that I may participate in those gifts which you communicated to them so wonderfully, and with so much mercy and generosity. Take from my heart whatever is not pleasing to you, and make of it a worthy dwelling place for yourself. Illumine my mind, that I may see and understand the things that are for my eternal good. Inflame my heart with pure love of you, that I may be cleansed from the dross of all inordinate attachments, and that my whole life may be hidden with Jesus in God. Strengthen my will, that I may be made conformable to your divine will, and be guided by your holy inspirations. 
aid me by your grace to practice the divine lessons of humility, poverty, obedience, and contempt of the world, which Jesus taught us in his mortal life. O oh, rend the heavens and come down, consoling spirit. Give me the inspiration and encouragement that I need to faithfully comply with the duties of my state, to carry my daily cross patiently, and to endeavor to accomplish the divine will with the utmost perfection. Spirit of love, spirit of purity, spirit of peace, sanctify my soul more and more, and give me that heavenly peace which the world cannot give. Bless our Holy Father, the Pope. Bless the Church. Bless our bishops, our priests, all religious orders, and all the faithful, that they may be filled with the Spirit of Christ and labor earnestly for the spread of his kingdom. O Holy Spirit, you giver of every good and perfect gift, Grant me, I beseech you, the intentions of this novena, that all Catholics of the parish of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary will return to the sacraments when the pandemic is over. May your will be done in me and through me. May you be praised and glorified forevermore. Amen. <laughs>